you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Saturday, February 10th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide division, missing persons detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. A wealthy businessman had dropped from sight. There was no trace of him, no apparent reason for his disappearance. We had to find him. Person's Friday. Yeah, Evans. You did, huh? And what time was that? Uh-huh. I see. No. No, we'll be right down. Sure pour now, Joe. There's some hot coffee I brought you. Well, we'll have to drink it on the way. Just got a call from Evans Harbor Division. They found Jarrett's car. Where? Parked at the end of Pier 6, abandoned. Found it about 7 o'clock this morning. They checked the car? Yeah, they did. Found Jarrett's overcoat in the front seat, letter in the pocket. Yeah. Suicide note. <laughs> John Keith Jarrett was a prominent and prosperous man. He was a well-known civic figure and socialite. As a young man, he'd inherited a moderately successful business from his father, and over a period of 20 years, had built it into a million-dollar concern. He was apparently happily married to an attractive woman, and he was the father of two grown children, a son, Keith, age 26, and a daughter, Evelyn, age 23. 8.22 a.m. Frank and I left the office and drove down to San Pedro, where we met officers Brent and Hanby. The two-hour search of the harbor had netted nothing. Dragging operations around the pier itself were called off. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll put in with you. Jared disappears Thursday night after work. His car doesn't turn up till this morning. If he made up his mind to jump off the pier, why'd he stall around an extra day and a half? Yeah. What about the note? Did it check out? Yeah, it matches the samples of Jarrett's writing that Don Meyer had. I don't know, Joe. None of it seems to jibe too well with a man like Jarrett. No sign of foul play, no physical evidence. Looks like we got a lot of checking to do. Well, if we could just find a reason why Jarrett would want to jump off a pier. It's going to take more than that suicide note to sell me. How about Mrs. Jarrett? When's she due back? She's flying in late tonight from Sacramento. We can check her out in the morning. Sergeant Friday? Yeah. Message for you. Thank you. What do you got? Jarrett's gun. Crime lab boys found it. Where? In his car. They say it was hidden up under the dashboard. Yeah? It's been used recently. Two empty shells. When the car was found abandoned at the end of Pier 6, the obvious guess was that Jared had taken his own life by drowning. If that was the case, what accounted for the two empty shells in his gun? Why was it carefully hidden up under the dashboard of the car after it was used? Why were the only fingerprints on it those of Jarrett? After we left the crime lab, Frank and I spent the rest of the day interviewing friends and business associates of the missing man. The answers were the same. Not one of them could think of a good reason why Jarrett would take his own life. According to them, there was no logical reason for Jarrett to take his life. More than half of them expressed the thought that he had met with some kind of foul play. The next morning, Sunday, Frank and I drove out to Bel Air to talk with Mrs. Jarrett. There was a strong smell of liquor on her breath. It's not good to keep them out of the water too long, you know. It's all right, you go right ahead, ma'am. I've got a few questions we'd like to ask you. Oh, I don't suppose you've heard anything more about my husband? Not since yesterday, no. Oh, it's all so confusing. I don't know what to think. We understand you were visiting relatives up north when your husband disappeared, is that right? Yes, my cousin Eleanor in Sacramento. Uh, my maid called me there, and she said Jack didn't come home for dinner Thursday. She said he didn't come home all night. Have you looked over your husband's room since you've been back? Uh, yes. Yes, when I first got in last night. None of his things are missing, just the suit he was wearing. Now, that's why I say it's so confusing. I can't understand it. Uh, wouldn't you care for some brandy or something? No, thank you. Uh, coffee? Something else? Not right now, thank you. Oh, well, I... I think I might have a little more brandy. 
help sometime in the morning. Sergeant, I'd like to have you tell me the truth. What do you really think has happened to my husband? Well, that's just what we're trying to find out, Miss Jarrett. All we've got to go on is that letter we found in his car. Oh, I can't believe there's anything in that. Jack and I have been married 31 years. He'd never take his own life. I know him that well. The letter was in his handwriting, ma'am. That's been confirmed. Well, that's why I say it's all so confusing. Oh, look. Isn't that a beautiful carnation? Orchid rose, they call it. Pretty. Yes, ma'am. Do you know of anything in your husband's personal life that might account for his disappearance, Miss Jarrett? Well, I'm quite sure there isn't another woman, if that's what you mean. No, that's not what we mean. Family trouble, for instance. Any arguments, disagreements. Well, we have our share. More than our share, I guess. Nothing recent, though. No offense intended, ma'am. You don't seem too disturbed by what's happened. A suicide note and all. No. No, I guess I don't. You don't think this marital trouble you mentioned could lead to your husband's suicide then, huh? It didn't mean that much to Jack. Good or bad. His family never meant that much to him. He wrecked everything I ever wanted. I won't bore you with the story. Do you know of any business troubles that might have upset him? No. Jack never discussed business with me. He had his own interests. Children had their interests. Guess I have mine. Ma'am. I drink, Sergeant. It's something to do. I drink every day in the week. I drink quite a bit. It's only been since the children left. I don't blame them. Jack didn't care. I guess I don't care myself anymore. We never were a family. Do you know if your husband's seen your son or daughter recently? Oh, no. He never visits them. He's never had anything in common with them. Can't you go away and leave me alone? Can't you see that all I want is a little happiness? I don't care what I have to pay, just a little happiness. You won't buy it with that. Maybe. Doesn't seem to matter too much to me. How do you mean? It doesn't matter, Sergeant. I don't hate Jack. I don't love him. Yeah. I just don't care, that's all. Before we left the Bel Air mansion, we got the addresses of the son and daughter and we checked over Mr. Jarrett's room. We found no leads. At 7 p.m. that night, Frank and I got in touch with Evelyn Jarrett. She lived on the eighth floor of a Sunset Strip apartment house. At the age of 23, she had been twice married and twice divorced. She appeared nervous and upset as we questioned her. I don't mean to be rude, Sergeant. I have a date at 9 o'clock. I don't want to be late. We'll try to make it as quick as possible, Miss Jarrett. We talked to your mother. She told us you and your father haven't seen much of each other the past two years. Yes, that's right. None of us were ever really close to him. When's the last time you did see your father, Miss Jarrett? Up until Thursday night, not for about five months, I guess. Then you saw him Thursday night? Yes, he called me that afternoon, said he wanted to have dinner with me and my brother Keith. Did you have dinner with him? Uh-huh, a little Spanish place out on Melrose. Keith was late as usual. Wasn't that unusual for your father, having you and your brother get together with him for dinner? Didn't happen very often. Mother probably told you that. How did he seem that night? Did you know anything unusual about him? No, he was pretty much the same as always. Asked Keith and me how we were getting along and if we needed any money. He didn't mention anything about leaving the city, going on a trip maybe? No, he didn't. We had dinner, a few drinks, then I left. About what time was that, Miss Jarrett? A little after midnight, I think. Keith and my father stayed on. They said they were going to have a few more drinks. How was your father when you left him, Miss Jarrett? Was he in a pretty good mood? He and Keith were arguing as usual. After a few drinks, they always argue. Anything serious? Keith had some debts. He wanted Dad to pay them off. Mr. Friday, there is one thing I'd like to ask you. Yeah. I read the story in the paper. 
The gun you found in my father's car, was it a nickel-plated revolver 32? Yeah, that's right. Two shells fired. Funny. Dad hasn't had that gun for a year. The reason I know is after my divorce, I moved into this place alone. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a gun around, so I asked my father for his. Yeah. He told me he'd given it away already. Said he didn't have any use for it. Well, who'd he give it to, you know? He told me he'd given it to my brother Keith. That was almost a year ago. Oh. Must be a mistake. If Keith had the gun, how could they find it in my father's car? Maybe Keith can tell us. Eight forty-six p.m. Frank and I went back to the office and we put in a call to the Green Castle Apartments in Hollywood, where Keith Jarrett was living. There was no answer. We tried the manager of the building. This is Sergeant Friday, Los Angeles Police Department. Yes, sir. That's right. We're checking on the whereabouts of a Keith Jarrett. Yes, sir. When did you say? I see. All right, sir. Thank you very much. That's Friday, Sergeant Friday, Michigan, 5211, extension 2548. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. We'd appreciate it. Right. Goodbye, sir. Maybe we got some. What? Manager says Jarrett's son doesn't live there anymore. Says he moved in a hurry. When? Thursday night. Another team of men checked out the apartment where Keith Jarrett had been living. We put in a call to his mother and sister. We asked them if they might know the whereabouts of the boy. They told us they didn't, but Mrs. Jarrett suggested we call a fashionable tennis club out in Hollywood, which her son belonged to. There, they told us Keith was scheduled to play in a tournament match on their courts the following morning. At 9.51 p.m., we checked out of the office. Monday, February 12th. At 10.30 a.m., we found Keith Jarrett in the locker room at the tennis club. Can I help you? You Keith Jarrett? Yeah, no, that's right. Something you want? Police officers. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How are you? How you doing? What do you want with me? I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Not at all. I've uh, got a match coming up. I got time. What can I do for you? It's about your father, Jarrett. We've been assigned to the case. Thought you might be able to help us out. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to tell you anything I know. I figure suicide, huh? Well, I'm not quite sure. We talked to your sister. We understand you had dinner with her and your father last Thursday night. Is that right? Yeah, I did. Now, it's kind of unusual. We haven't spent much time together in the last couple of years. My father and I didn't get along too well. well how do he seem to you Thursday night, all right? Yeah, pretty much the same as always. We had a few drinks, ate. That was about it. What time did you leave him? You remember? Oh, 1, 1 1.30, I guess. Did your father leave with you? Yeah, that's right. We drove to my place for a nightcap. Talked a little, and then he left. What would you talk about, do you recall? Uh, same old thing. He tried to argue me into taking a job at the company. <laughs> He's been trying to sell me on it for years. Never could see it. I see. What kind of work do you do now, Jared? Tennis. How's that? I play tennis. All the tournaments. I like it pretty well. My father never could see it, though. He calls us tennis pumps. I see. Then you don't have a regular job that you work at, huh? No, that's what we always argued about. Well, I like tennis, though. I figure if you've got the money and you don't have to work, you might as well be doing something you like. You know what I mean? I've been doing pretty well since I strengthened my backhand. I'm seated fourth in this tournament. Is that so? Oh, it's pretty good life, all in all. A lot of fresh air, nice-looking girls around. Good class of people. Uh -huh. You still live here in town, Jerry? A friend and I rent a place in North Hollywood. Just moved there. When did you move? Hmm, sometime last week. Why? Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thursday night. Is it supposed to mean something? You left pretty much in a hurry, didn't you? I guess so, yeah. You mind telling us why? <laughs> what difference does it make? I moved, that's all. Well, it might save us some trouble if you told us why. Just that there's no use advertising it, that's all. What's that? Oh, I got quite a few bills around town. They need paying. <laughs> Tried to get my father to cover them when I saw him Thursday night. He turned me down, so I figured the best thing to do was move. I'd lose some of the bill collectors. <laughs> For a while, anyway. Don't you usually notify your family when you move? Well, I was going to let them know. I haven't gotten around to it yet. See, I don't think I get it, all these questions. It's just routine, Jared. Now, we understand your father gave you a gun about a year ago. 32 revolver, nickel-plated. Yeah, that's right. Well, if you had the gun, how come it was found in your father's car? Because he asked me for it back. Must have been a month, six weeks ago. You say why he wanted it back? No, I didn't ask him. I dropped it off one day when I was going by his office. 
Well, you can check with his secretary, that Miss uh, Butler. Oh, say, if you don't mind, I better run. I got that doubles match coming up. Just one more question, Jared. Can you think of a good reason why your father would want to take his own life? Just one. Yeah. Have you met my mother? For the next three days, we continued pushing the search for John Keith Jarrett. We checked his bank statements, correspondence, anything that might give us a lead. One by one, we eliminated the possibilities. Jarrett's personal physician told us that after a recent examination, he considered his patient to be in sound physical and mental health. We rechecked Jarrett's business rating. His company was in excellent financial condition. His bank statements were gone over. Nothing showed there. We talked to Jarrett's lawyer. He could think of nothing to account for his client's disappearance or possible suicide. Ten days went by. We kept pressing the search. We got nowhere. Monday, February 26th, 1.15 p.m. Anything come in? Yeah, wire from Burden up at CII. What's he got? Report from the state police in Oregon. They had a traffic accident up there. Uh-huh. Fell a hole in the trailer, backed into a parked car. When the investigating officers checked his ID, they found two driver's licenses. One California, one Oregon. Two different names. Yeah. Well, they asked him about them. He said he found the California license. Highway Patrol checked with our CII. Uh-huh. Man gave his name as... Walter John Mitchell, address Medford, Oregon. What about the California license? Well, Brereton checked on it. Thumbprint on the application matches the one on the Oregon license. What about the name on it? John Keith Jarrett. Frank and I checked with Chief of Detective Thad Brown. We obtained permission to proceed to Medford, Oregon. We were met by members of the Medford Police Department and we filled them in on what we wanted. The Medford Department had no trouble locating Walter Mitchell. We drove out to the location. It was on a high bluff overlooking a lake. You gonna put that gun down or do we use ours? I was just cleaning it. It's not loaded. A little hard to tell from here. Your name Walter Mitchell? Police officers. We'd like to talk to you if we could. Los Angeles cops, huh? Yes, sir. Kind of out of your territory, aren't you? Your name Walter Mitchell? I wasn't lying about the gun. I was cleaning it. Doing the same thing to some fish here. Yes, sir. My name's Smith. It's my partner, Sergeant Friday. How do you do? How do you do, sir? How do you Beautiful day, isn't it? Nice warm sun. Caught these fish this morning, figuring on having them for dinner. Good life out here, officer. Yes, sir. I guess you have a pretty good hunch why we're here. Well, I don't know. I'd like to have you tell me. Your real name's Jarrett, isn't it? John Keith Jarrett. Yeah, I thought so. I've been halfway expecting it. Tell me, uh, how'd you find me? The accident you had near Portland. Highway patrolman checked on two driver's licenses. Names were different, but the thumbprint was the same. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Sacramento matched up the prints and sent the information along to us. Yeah, that's all right. Sure hand it to you fellas. Guess I made a bad mistake. Well, how about it, Mr. Jarrett? I mean, taking off like you did. Don't you figure you have some explaining to do here? Yeah, I imagine I do. You mind if I smoke? No, sir. Go right ahead. Well, sir, there's no need to tell you you've had a lot of people worrying about you. 
I don't think there are too many. My secretary may be right. Yes, sir. She filed a report. Uh, look, I realize you men know your business. I know I don't have to remind you, but I'd just like to make it clear. What's that, sir? I know a little about the law, and I want you to understand this. If you should tell anyone where I am, I'd consider it invasion of my personal rights, okay? Any way you want it. Maybe you uh, can't figure out my disappearing the way I did, but I think you know that legally I've done nothing wrong. I respected the rights of the law, and now I want the law to respect my rights. Well, there's just one thing, sir. Yes, sir? We've chased down quite a few blind alleys on this thing, that false suicide you staged, the gun, the letter. You want to tell us about it? I'm sorry about the legwork, believe me. You can hear the story if you want to. Short version along. long. Which one? You tell it. Mm -hmm. You've met my family, haven't you? Yes, we have. My wife? Yes, sir. My son, Keith? Yes, sir. My daughter? Yes, sir. Then you know. My wife's been an alcoholic for eight years. Why be polite? She's a drunk. My son's a tennis bum. There's no other word for that. My daughter? Yeah. You know it as well as I do. Two divorces, different boyfriend every week. I worked hard for my family, Sergeant. I was proud of them once. What would you do if they turned out the way they have? Well, I don't think I could say, Mr. Jarrett. I don't know your family that well. There's a good reason you don't, Mrs. Smith. It cost me a lot of money to keep them out of trouble. One jam after another, scandal. Ten years of it, covering up for them. I got tired of it, dead tired. Maybe I'm just getting old. You men care for a cold bottle of beer? No, thanks. No, thanks. Well, there's nothing more to tell, officers. I worked most of my life for my family. I've had two vacations in 20 years. I tried to do everything I could for them. They're rotting apart, Sergeant. All three of them. I didn't want to stand around and watch them rot. That's why I left. I see. They each have their own trust fund. They'll be taken care of. Yes, sir. I don't know. If I made the mistakes, I guess I'll pay for them. Not much fun changing your life when you're 52 years old. Gets lonely sometimes. Pretty lonely. Well, what are you going to do now, do you know? I'm not sure yet. Figured maybe I'd drive up the Alcan Highway, take a look at Alaska. Great country up there. Do some fishing. Maybe head down toward Mexico. Great country we live in, officers. Closest I ever got to it was a picture postcard. I'm going to see it firsthand now. It's lonely sometimes, but every mile I roll, I put a little of my heartache behind me. Guess I'll get used to it. Say, you men wouldn't like to stay for dinner, would you? I'm learning to cook. No thanks, Mr. Jared. Guess we better start getting back, huh? Yeah. Well, thanks very much for stopping by, officers. Sorry for all the extra work I caused you. Glad to have met you, Mr. Jarrett. Good luck. Same to you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Friday. Good luck, sir. Goodbye. Bye. Nice fella, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah. Sure a funny one, huh, Joe? Yeah. Well, what's the proof? It's no crime to get lost. On March 4th, the final report was filed by the officers investigating the disappearance of John Keith Jarrett. In a moment, the results of that report. After a complete investigation by the officers assigned to the case, it was found that the subject had acted within his rights legally. 
for the officers to disclose his whereabouts would have constituted an invasion of privacy.